Welcome, I'm Tafara Gadamu. You're watching the Meet ETV show. My guest today, Dr. Richard Yetz, is a pioneer of what he calls grasp matics, a new approach to teaching maths. Linguistically, the word perception, the prefix is P-E-R, per. And per means each, a, uh, or one. That's where you get the term person as an individual, right? So uh, perception means analyzation or view or observation. That's why linguistics is very important. Remember, if you're teaching the maths as a language, the math is called grasp Maddox, and the language is called grass-ish. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, That's so, music to my ears. Well, I'm happy to know. Are you dancing? No, I'm not. Because <laughs> music makes people dance. I hope you're dancing. <laughs> so why is zero important to you? What's, uh, why be, is because, what is zero to you? Yes. When you it means a lot. It means a lot to me because of the way the British taught me first, and the Americans taught the Europeans. The Europeans are the only ones struggling Primarily, they're the primarily, they're the only ones really struggling, Europeans and Americans, about the definition of zero. They're saying it's not a number, then they're saying it is. That's contradiction, <laughs> right? If you look at, you study most indigenous cultures that K N E W can knew about <laughs> about the zero. They always emphasize that the zero means the circumference of life, which is a circle, right? Look, there's no such thing as nothing because there's always something. I have never seen nothing. I have never experienced nothing. So how can you tell me about nothing when I've never experienced it or seen it? It doesn't, it doesn't exist. That's a concept. But perception, as I mentioned before, the prefix is P-E-R, per, which means each, a, one, or by. Perception means view or analyzation, observation. So linguistically, perception should be defined as one's view of a thing as it really is. We're talking about the reality of things, right? But so zero, it's real, is, zero is zero. That's what it is. Then that's reality. That's perception. Right. Well said. But not nothing. But you see now, if you're going to conceptualize it, conceptually, zero means nothing. But that's a European concept of the figure zero. You see, let me get another example. If zero means nothing, how much would one zero they call 10 value? What is that? If zero means nothing, right? How much would one zero they call 10 value? How much would it value? <laughs> That's where complication goes in. Most people say one, which makes sense, because one with zero, which is one with nothing, would equal one. Then therefore, one zero, they call 10, can be more than nine, and eight, and seven. That's contradiction. And here where the contradiction starts, like you said earlier in, the, in this interview, you said you were taught starting counting as one. So was I in the British school system, and so in the American school system. So how are you going to start counting at one? And when you get to nine, then all of a sudden, the zero showed up. I asked you a question, where did the zero come from? But. If you start out with it originally, you remember what, how originally spelled? The zero, the O, ah, right? If you start out with it originally, then it, to me, it's called perceptional logic. 
that after nine, I'm now going to two figures, right? Okay, which is called two, the, the double digit, to create now one zero to call 10, which is the starting, the zero and the one. That is logic. But if you don't have the zero, how are you gonna write 10? So are you saying that Western education yes. system has no logic at all? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying the way I was taught by them. For, for some reason, what you're trying to say, to tell me right mm -hmm. now in here, seems to be, seems to me, like it is some kind of protest. No, no, what I'm doing, grass matic is really designed to enhance what they gave us. Yeah, it's, an, it's an act of enhancement. Right? Enhance or change it? No, enhance. Because you remember now two is still two, and one is still one, and three is still three, and four is still four. Right. You but, don't change but, that. But, but, but you're what challenging you what you've been taught on every single count. I mean, yeah, but you see, you're not changing, you see, and you're not uh, challenging either. You're enhancing because you're building upon and you're, you're filling out the missing, the missing um, um, blank area. That's what you're really doing. And what you're doing, which is very good too, is that, remember I told you before that math's supposed to be taught as a language. So obviously you have to create a language that would make sense so the math would be logical and more comprehensive. That's why we call it graspish. I was taught math in English, but in the English I was taught it, it was confusing for me. I didn't get it like most people. <laughs> so now Graspis comes and says, okay, let's look at it from this approach. There you go, that's all it is. From this perceptional way of thinking and looking at it this way. We're just talking about the starting numerical symbol zero. If you start out with the zero not being right, there is a great possibility you would be dilapidated in your thinking about the others. So you, the zero means foundation, like now in America, talking about ground zero, right? It's a place, it's a, it's a location. It's not nothing, right? So this is making our people, and I said our people, I'm talking people of the diaspora of Africa and of the continent itself, and of the Caribbean, et cetera. L people remember now, before the Europeans came and invaded Africa, the African people have their own numerical system and way of thinking. And from my studies and search, I learned that the Africans are very perceptional thinkers vary. But once you decide now to accept the Greek or the Romans or the Germans or the French or the British or the Americans way of thinking, you're going to change now your cultural way of perceiving things and accept the European Greek mystical way of learning, which is based on concepts. Europeans are very good at conceptualizing things. So, do you, so when you come back here, you've been exploring, you know, things and do you still, do the Africans, Ethiopians have uh, uh, leftovers from their years, from their period of conceptualization? Yeah, well, yeah, because if you look at the, um, the history of, of, of Ethiopia, you find indeed that I think one of the, the well, two of the, two of the outside culture that has influenced Ethiopia to a point that has changed Ethiopia is the Romans, right? And then after the Romans, the Greeks, right? Well, I had the Greeks first, the Greeks first, and then the Romans, right, the Greeks. The Greeks really put a lot in place. Because remember, the Greeks all went to philosophies and stuff like that. And the Romans even took the Greeks' way of thinking and, and, and worked with it, you know, from a more political and military, military strategic way of doing things. So what that did, it, for most African nations, they had to now try to adjust to that way of thinking because of the dominance of the politics and the government. But, so it changed. For example, I was surprised when I was learning Amarini, Amharic, that originally you didn't have a zero, but now you start using the zero, right? And in my study, I was saying to me, but that, that doesn't make sense because all the other commit in Egypt, they had it, you use it. Matter of fact, the zero, you, because you asked all in this interview about what the zero means to me, I don't think we have enough time to really tell you how much it means to me. But in essence of time, I say this, 